guys, it's Dawn here. Welcome back to Bridal Business. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. Today, I have an amazing guest with me. I'm so excited to introduce to you Melissa Mitchell. She's an abundant uh, life coach. Melissa was previously a photographic makeup artist for 10 years and understands the importance of believing in yourself and aligning with your authenticity for true success in your business. And we're talking all about that with her today. Um, now working as a mindset manifestation coach, she helps to empower other other small business owners to truly own their worth and understand their true potential for abundance. It's all about feeling worthy so that you can truly step into your power of abundance. She's trained in NLP and life coaching um, and Melissa empowers others to value, for, to, uh, to own their value for their true alignment in their business. And I'm so thrilled to have you on the show with me. Thank you so much for joining me, Melissa. Thank you, Dawn. What an introduction. Thank you so much. That is lovely. Yes, yes. Let's empower um, some people today. Let's. Do I it. know. I, do you know what? I think one of the biggest things right now for me, as the world is opening up to hair and beauty, is that we empower these hair styles and makeup artists, no matter what their path is, to make some money. They've got to start to grow and they've got to build their uh, lifestyle around them. Um, but let's start, first of all, and talk a little bit about how you've kind of transitioned. You, you were a makeup artist, which I love. I love bringing on guests that have done makeup artistry or, or, or weddings or they've been in um, hair, for example, because you understand the industry. And I think that's the key. There's a lot of people out there that teach and coach um, and do business mentoring. But if you've not been in the beauty industry, you don't always understand the kind of, you know, the deal with having a local business, right? Having that brick and mortar business. So how did you, first of all, transition out of doing makeup and what got you into the coaching side of your business? Right. So thank you so much. So, yes, I was um, a the well theatrical makeup artist, worked in uh, photography mostly, really loved it, but um, did understand it's quite cut through. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly because I'm not a hairdresser as well, I was limited to what I could do too as well. Um, but that didn't mean that I couldn't be successful just as a makeup artist. So I started to think about other ways that I could make money, you know, with the makeup. Um, and I actually started coaching um, women to feel empowered uh, and, and to do their own makeup. Love so that. I started to do, yeah, I started to do a lot of um, workshops for women. You know, perhaps they're going back to work and I'd get groups of women and we would sit around and I would teach them not what you and I know as, as a trained makeup artist, but what they need to know to feel empowered and to move yes. on and then from there so I, I loved the industry but as you know it is very cutthroat um and you you've got to really have a thick skin in it you've got to be prepared to to sometimes work hard um not that we don't but it's it's you know uh, especially weddings you know you're up early early starts yeah, yeah early yeah, starts yeah. long days on your feet all day yep. yeah not, not always the best um light not always yes. the best Oh my gosh. Oh, venues. Oh, yeah, the yeah. venues. Yeah, um, yeah. Some places where you're sitting in a bathroom uh, yeah. or you're in a hotel room and there's 30 people in the hotel room with you. It's oh, hard. you mean that? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Once yeah. a full body tattoo covered, which was going to take me about oh. four hours and said, oh, I don't actually want to sit up. I want to lie down doing it. I'm like, well you know, on my back for three, four hours. But but yeah, of course, it's quite cutthroat. So I started to really, really understand that, um, and, and, and this is, and I know we'll talk about this, with mindset, in order to, to increase your energy, in order to increase what you needed to achieve, you needed to, to believe it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Your, your mindset can increase your energy. It can. So I started to sort of, um, I love makeup, but for me, it wasn't something I wanted to do for 20 years. You know, I did it for 10 years. And so I started to move on. It was also through my own experiences of becoming a mother and trying to then get back into makeup. Um, I got sort of back into weddings, not so much the photography side um, and understanding what, well, hey, I felt different about myself Yeah. in running a business. Yeah. And you would understand being a mum too. It's, I felt different. Yeah. I didn't feel empowered. I didn't feel... I had, I felt like I was out of touch with the industry, which I, which I wasn't. It's not hard to pick back up um, with your styles and everything, but I did, I really struggled. So that kind of set me on a path of, wow, this is really powerful. How does your brain work? How, how can I increase my energy? How can I 
you know, so that I'm profitable when I'm doing my work, but also feeling abundant in doing it. And that's really what led me down the path to where I am today. That's really interesting because, so the biggest thing uh, I want to talk to you about is mindset and and how that plays a role in creating the business life, the business stroke life that we really, really want. Um, And I think what you're saying there is that, you know, when you, things, situations happen, you change the way you feel towards certain situations, towards your business. And I I guess what you're saying is as well, it's okay to acknowledge those feelings and think, okay, I'm not where I want to be anymore. Is this really lighting me up? And I, and I think that that is um, a key for the hair and makeup artists out there because, you know, I obviously with, with the closures that we've had around the world and obviously I reach a global audience with um, the UK and the U S really only starting to open up. I was on a, a clubhouse. I was listening to a clubhouse um, room just earlier and they're all wedding pros and none of them are working at the moment. Still, working. Yeah, no. And there was a heap of them in there. I would say there's a good 10 people on the stage and none of them were working with around the, the States. So, so I, I think that where I wanted to, to kind of go with you when it comes to mindset was how we, how we feel about our business mm-hmm. reflects in everything, reflects in our personal life and cool. in then how we're going to be attracting our clients and, yes. and then how they feel when they're with us. Yes, so, 100%. Yeah, so what I want to say is, so here's what I want to go with this. So let's talk about mindset okay let's talk about what is mindset let's start with that first what do we think mindset is what's your kind of like take on mindset and 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 what that means to us as business owners yeah of course of course so what you said is so so key and I know we're going to touch on that a little bit more so mindset is is the understanding that what we believe and what we feel and what we think affects our success Mm. So you can have a growth mindset and you can have a fixed mindset. Now, fixed mindset is where we believe that these are the skills I'm given. This is my life. This is my situation. So I can't do A, B and C. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very fixed mindset. Or do we have a growth mindset? This is the situation. These are my skills. This is what I can offer people. I know I'm good. So let's work it out. So something that I always like to say, Dawn, um, and this might help your listeners, is I always look at it this way. You know, the same person who says, I can't do this because of A, B, and C, there'll always be someone else who says, I can do it because of A, B, and C, I can do this. So it's understanding, mindset is understanding that we are in control of it. Obviously, there's a limit. I'm not going to be a pro basketballer yeah, and it yeah. doesn't matter how much I believe it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but, but if you need to make money and there's a pandemic on, um, you know, really get resourceful in how am I going to make money when I can't physically go there? Yes. What can I do? Yes. You know, that, yeah. That's the growth mindset. I'm going to use my skills here, perhaps run some online workshops in, you know, teaching corporate women how to do makeup or, or whatever it is. It's understanding that, your skills are adaptable mm. and you we have it in us to choose that. The same, I always say as well, the same water that softens the potato hardens the egg. It's the same water. It's yeah. going to do one thing to one ingredient. And, you know, we've got the ingredients in our life. It's going to do something else. We have the one thing that's going to have two different outcomes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I love that. And I think that um, when it comes to having that growth mindset, it's having the adaptability, isn't it? it it's, it's being adaptable in the business. And, and one of the things that I teach is, um, and, and, and I've been teaching it for so long, pre-pandemic, I've been saying to my clients, multiple streams of income. Look yeah. at how you can generate income, not just with weddings. Now, weddings yeah. are great and they are always perhaps going to be your bread and butter. Most people say weddings are my bread and butter clients. You know, I, I as long as I've got weddings coming in, that's great. But and that's fine. But when weddings go away, which yeah. is exactly what happened, what have you got left? Well, most people, you know, most people had to down tools. But those people that have 
uh, survived over these last 12 months and obviously in Australia we were, we were a lot luckier yeah. because of, of being able to go back and, and do it but I mean even in Victoria Victoria was down for eight months yeah, you know years. couldn't do anything for that amount of time so we were completely out of last year you know we sort of missed um you know some of wedding season really last year and then we're not when we're, we're not um, out of the woods yet I mean even here in Brisbane uh, you know we're getting the shutdowns you know suddenly it's like oh sorry nothing's happening this weekend we're all locking down because there's been a case of coronavirus so you know but those people that are, have continued I think have shown their resilience and the strain that shown their strength is because they have pivoted they have I hate that word a bit but they have looked at you know how can I with my growth mindset how can I change my circumstance to yeah. suit me 100 percent. so what do you think you really yeah, good go word, resilience you said a great yeah. word yeah 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 and i think well look uh, resilience has been shown to me a lot lately i mean particularly with the fact that uh, we've we've moved states and my kids have all changed like uh, the resilience that they've shown even um i think that's why the resilience thing but i, I just feel like you know there are again listening in this clubhouse room they were like we're ready like we're ready we've been doing this we've been doing this we're we can't wait for this industry to and you know the governors were saying about them opening up soon and and I thought they've been holding on you know yeah. and they've been doing some coaching and some training and and you know like I said the makeup artists and hairstylists that are surviving are the ones who took the initiative they had the growth mindset to say okay I'm not open and I can't be face to face what can I do what else can I do and that comes down to, you're, you're so right, Dorman, and this comes down to, and this is a lot of things uh, with mindset and success and happiness even, just in general life, mm. is are you looking external to solve the problem or are we looking internal? Mm. When we look internal, we get resourceful. And that's what you're talking about. Like there's other ways to tap into your talents that can generate income. And of course, that's a whole other topic that we yeah. could discuss. But there's so yeah. much like, makeup artists can do. and. Yeah. You would know that I've been out of the industry for so long, but you would know that, that, you know, you, you, you're coaching and you're helping. You, you've looked internally. What can I do? Yeah. When we look external and say, well, okay, well, yeah, reality is externally, we can't control. It, it's mm. crap what's happened, but we can't control the pandemic. And mm. as you said, we're not out of the woodworks yet. We mm. don't know what's going to happen. You know, in Australia, we're about to go into winter in the next couple of months. We don't know what's going to happen. No. Now, but, and of course it sucks, but we can't fight it because we can't do anything about it. No. no. So do we look internal? Yeah, we look internal. And this is the only thing that we can control. And it goes back to what you said, it's the resilience and getting resourceful. What else can I do to generate an income that still keeps me in that industry if that's what your clients choose? Yeah. But with, you know, so that I'm ready to back, you know, go when it comes out. And as you said, people do hold on. And that means that they're determining their success based on a decision by the yeah. government or, or a pandemic, which sucks. And none of us thought we we're going to be in this pandemic, but here we are. Yeah. So we can't fight it. We have to just say, okay, it is what it is. What am I going to do? Yeah. So what do you think is one of the biggest things that holds business owners back from being where they want to be? If we put the pandemic aside, we put those external things aside, what is it you think that really holds us back? I, I still think, and yeah, like I said, let's put the pandemic aside. Let's put those things that we can't control inside. Hmm. It is still external. It is, I think, one of the biggest and internal, but one of the biggest things that, that would hold people back is one, looking what's out there and believing that externally they don't fit in they're not good enough Im imposter syndrome mm -hmm. what if i put myself out there what if i put myself out there and i'm not good as the next one so that's again looking into looking external what's holding them back then is the fear so what it comes down to is it always comes down to fear whether we understand that or not it's a fear because that's what that's what we're born with that that's your brain doing it, what it's meant to do so fear of okay I'm not going to I'm not going to jump out there and put myself out there because I fear the reaction from people and internally what holds people back is then that fear translates to a limiting belief hmm. so this is where they they tell themselves based on no evidence I who am I to go and you know, charge this or, or to start a workshop or to put my name up for that job in Brisbane or whatever it is. Yeah. 
So, so it is external that we internalize and we make these stories up. And yeah. It goes- with what we charge people as well yeah that's what I wanted to touch on as well so because I always find that uh hair and makeup artists they they allow themselves some of some of them they allow themselves to be uh haggled down with their prices or they start extremely low and I know I've been there I know what it's like when you start out you feel like, well, I don't have the experience that she does down the street. So I can't charge the same as her. She's been doing this for 10 years and I've only been doing it for one. Um, and I know that, that that's something that um, a lot of stylists struggle to charge their worth. And, cool. and like you were just saying that there, it's, it's what I guess would be described as a limiting belief. So- oh. Absolutely. Talk about like what, what a limiting belief is. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's such a great example with, with, with the uh, pay. And I, I did go to, uh, before I get onto the limiting beliefs, I did do a workshop with a guy in Melbourne, Aaron Sansoni. He's amazing. He's an entrepreneur. And he did a little experiment and he just chose personal trainers, right? And he said, okay, if you're in the room, this is pre-COVID, so mm-hmm. we could actually go out. Yeah. Said, okay. Stand up if you're a personal trainer. So we could even say this with makeup and hair artists. Um, Stand up, okay? What do you charge? $60. What do you charge? $120. What do you charge? $90. Went around the room and he said, why did you base that? And he said, oh, it's just my area. He said, that's BS. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Absolute BS. He said, you know what? I pay my personal trainer per hour and it was something like $180. He said, but I pay it because that person is so worthy and so confident in their product that they don't waver when they when they offer that price yes and it comes down to that limiting belief and another example is what I say to people is about owning your worth when you see someone that is charismatic and they walk into a room and they're a magnet that's not just oh they've got great you know social skills or anything of course they do but it's not about that what it is is the confidence in themselves and they own own themselves themselves. yes they own themselves yeah can't put yeah. your on it, but it's them not worrying about what people are thinking and owning their worth. So people can sense it, Dawn. So with a limiting belief, people sense that when 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 clients are being told, okay, it's it's eighty dollars or six hundred dollars, people sense it. Do you mm. you know they're quivering or they're oh it's you know and they're justifying oh it's because I use this makeup and I use that. No, it's it's stick to it. Yes, to it and know your worth. And yes. if you don't want to digress from that, like then don't but yes. that's where the limiting belief comes in the and it's it's actually quite easy particularly with promoting yourself online I mean I know what you guys do is a lot of it's is face to face but if your customers and your audiences sorry getting um business online it's very very easy to give authority online yeah yeah to show that you're worthy of it you just and- turn up Showing up gives you the authority. This is what I'm saying. I'm like, turn on the camera and just be there. You don't have to give them a lesson in how to do their eye makeup. You literally can just tell them about a product that you're using. All that, all that is doing just by getting on and being in front. Yes, I'm so glad you said that. My yeah. God, so glad you said that, Dawn. Because so many people don't understand that, do they? It's, no. it's just showing up. Showing up. Yeah, and when you're in the front of mind of people and they say, oh, you know, Dawn's great or Martha's great or whoever it is that they're connecting with in your industry, if you show up, you're one step ahead of that next person. And right. and something I've heard as well, I mean, I know all your, your clients and uh, your audience are very, you know, fabulous at what they do with makeup. But realistically, we only really need to know 10% more of that person that we're, we're, we're helping. 100%, yeah. I say 100%, but 10%, yeah. <laughs> But no, but this is exactly my point. Okay, so I always talk about, so one of the things I, um, one of the things I teach is, um, you know, the, um, the movie Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. Um, and it's with, you know, the one with Tom Hanks and it's with uh, Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. And it's actually based on a book. And it's based on a book because it's kind of like a true story. And it's of a guy called, I think his name's Frank Abagnathy or something like that. Anyway, the reason why, 
he was kind of it took so long for the FBI to catch him um, was basically because he was always one step ahead of them. But one of the things he said when someone was interviewing him, and I think this was, you know, years, years after the book came out, somebody said to him that because he'd been a college professor and they, they were saying to him, how on earth did you teach like this subject when you, you know, you didn't even study it yourself. And he said, all I had to read was the textbook and read a chapter ahead. And I was already ahead of my students. Love Do you know that. what I mean? So when you're saying that, when people are saying to me, like, that they feel like they don't know enough to be an authority. And I'm like, you only have to be a step ahead of the people that you're teaching. Yeah. I don't know everything. I don't come online and pretend to know everything about every social media app and how to grow every single person's business in the whole of the world uh, when it comes to weddings. Hey. Yeah. But... I've got the experience now where I'm probably a step ahead of, you know, my audience and they're, and, and I've made all the mistakes as well. That's the other thing, Look, learning um, from the mistakes and sharing those yeah. mistakes. It's okay yeah. to fall down. Just pick yourself up, dust yourself off and tell them why you fell over. It shows your authenticity. And that, that's such a good point because when it, that for your audience, this is such a huge point, Dawn, Dawn what you just said. When you show that you don't know everything, but I know enough to help you and you're confident with it, people resonate with you more because they say, hey, if Dawn or Melissa can do this, I can because she's human and she makes mistakes too. Yeah. And we do. Like you yeah. said, you know, I make mistakes and I make mistakes when I do a live and I, and I laugh it off. And yeah. but this is what Stumble you're- Stumble over your words. And hundred <laughs> percent. Or- your daughter comes in on the on the live with a red balloon and it the movie it has just been announced she comes in like a crazed oh. psycho with her hair like this and says i'm not getting out <laughs> what do you do <laughs> Don't know who that to. Yeah, mine came in on a live stream this morning goes mommy there's someone at the door and I was just like fantastic. <laughs> oh, thank All you. Right, leave that one. Let's start again. Take 2. <laughs> that was only today. Actually, 100% and it makes you more relatable so for your audience who you know I'm guessing most of your audience would get most of their work obviously from referrals too yes, but yes. from online and their yes. online presence yes tap into it because the more that you're authentic and and you're authentic by not worrying about mistakes not worrying if what if someone knocks on the door yeah not worrying about obviously you know you don't want those things to happen, but not worrying about when it does, people resonate with you and say, she sounds so down to earth. I'd love her at my wedding. Like yes. I, I I remember doing a wedding and this is a long time ago. Um, and, and someone like I do actually, I still do the occasional wedding if people ask me, but it's not my business now. It's like just through referrals, but I don't promote it. But I yeah, remember same with me now. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. People always mm. say, Hey, you should go to Dawn or whatever. Yeah. I had this wedding and she booked me. She didn't know any of my work. She didn't look at any of my photos. And she booked me purely because she said, you didn't flinch when I said I wanted my grandkids at the wedding, to their one, to walk down the aisle. I said, oh, that's so sweet. She said that was important to her because she, she knew that I was authentic saying, it's a family affair. We're going to make this yeah. a beautiful day. Yeah. And I got the job out of it, you know. And yeah. Yeah. It, you know what whatever you're charging six hundred a thousand dollars whatever for, for one job just because I didn't flinch and I didn't say oh I don't really want them in the room I just went and I think Dawn that goes back to being a makeup artist if you're a good makeup artist yeah your skills are great but you also understand you've got to work in tough situations yeah. oh and I and I think that your skill um you know really is about 20 percent of of what you do because you know you can be the best hair and makeup artist in the world but if people don't know how to find you um you know then yeah. yeah yeah and and so i you know i think that this this your your skill needs to be backed up by you know your your brand your presence yeah. you know the way you communicate with your clients yeah. Yeah. Um, and then exactly what you're talking about, being authentic and, and genuinely uh, wanting to serve your clients. Exactly. You know, that's, that's it. And you made a really good point, 20%. You're saying, and this is the thing we always talk about, and I know that um, this is obviously, you know, what you were touching on, 20% strategy. We can all go to school and learn this, or we can all go to YouTube and learn makeup. Yeah. But there's the 80% of, 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 of mindset so that your customers feel valued yes. and serving um I, I remember uh, this is many years ago going to um 
going to, I don't know if it was a chiropractor or whatever, and they're going to crack my neck, which I I love that. So I'm not done this morning. That <laughs> oh, did you? Oh yeah. my gosh, I'm so jealous. I love it. <laughs> and I remember going to her and this lady had just as much skills as her colleague, yet she was flinching, but she wasn't telling me. So every time she went to do it, I could sense that she wasn't confident. Mm. I started to be not confident in her. So I spoke up. So she went and got a colleague who just went because she was the way she grabbed me. So this is the thing when, 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 if you're confident with your customers, even when you're physically doing makeup or in when you're delivering your price, there's no flinch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's no flinch. They either yeah. want it or they don't. If they don't want it, it's not because they don't believe that you're not worth, worth it. It's, it's, it, if you're com- if you're comfortable to say, Hey, I'm $600 or whatever it is. Mm and you don't flinch and you stand by it and you own that and it's your authentic self. And if they don't want it, it's, it's not because you're not a good makeup artist. It's maybe it's not in their budget. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. No, that is exactly it. And I, and that's another thing that I always say as well, when it comes to your prices. Um, and I was saying to you off camera, like I will never dictate to any of my stylists, this is what you should or shouldn't charge yeah. when it comes to your hair and makeup. That is down to you, your business. And yes, in some is, in, instances, your area. I mean, you do want to know the brides that you're serving in your area. Yes. And, you know, you, and of course, we don't want to be pricing ourselves out of the market that we don't attract brides. I mean, you know, you have that, that, that comes... Yeah. You have to know everything. It's the, it's the balance of knowing uh, who your target market is. If you know that target market, you're going to know this is how much they're going to tolerate. And I know how much I can I can target them. And and I know that as well, that people are saying um, when it comes to hair salons and, and beauty salons, that particularly with hairdressers, when they start to get booked out, you know, people say, well, then it's time for a pay rise. And they're like, oh, no, if I up my prices, you know, I might lose some clients. Yeah, you might lose some clients, but are you worth more money? absolutely have the price of hair color gone up absolutely you know are your bobby pins costing you more you know everything goes up so why shouldn't your price go up as well yeah and 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 really good point because we start to attract that audience like if yeah um if, if you are going to attract uh, and uh, look i'm not saying it's got anything to do with money but if 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 you want to attract an audience that thinks $20 for a makeup is reasonable and you should come out and do it or do you want to attract someone who values you and says yeah I'm going to pay you $100 or $150 or whatever it yeah. is yeah you're going to attract a better quality of people and I don't mean as in their personality but if you're haggling with someone because they want to pay you $50 20 or just 20 you know the other thing is in makeup I don't know if you've ever had this when people go I don't want much I just yeah. want this. I've still got to come out and do it. So it's still nice. Yes, exactly. Yes, I know. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, yeah. And people, but look, and that's not going to say that there isn't going to be the the people that will try and haggle you. We're always going to have one or two that are, you know, going to try and negotiate or they're going to try and get you to beat somebody else's prices. What my hope is, is that by following some of the steps that I lay out in the program that I'm going to be come that you you've graciously decided <laughs> graciously said that you're gonna I'm so excited that you're gonna run a class with my uh with my group but um so one of the things I teach is that when you are able to look at your pricing that there and, and you actually create your pricing around your target market, right. you don't get as many of those hagglers. You don't get many as people going, oh, but, you know, she's $80 and she's $80 yeah. and she's $80 and, and, and therefore, you know, or, oh, but she's only 70. So I'm going to go with the cheapest. And, yeah. and, you know, I say, what I say is that doesn't happen when you have aligned yourself with the right brides with the right quality of brides because you're targeting a different target market to her down the street whether you charge the same you charge more you charge less who you target is down to you and and your business your brand and and how you are exuding that uh in your personal presence and your social media and online presence 100 percent, 100 percent. and i've heard a term recently because i'm into manifesting and attracting that and one of the mentors that I follow, he actually said financial temperature. So your financial temperature, if you've got it set here, that's what you're going to get. Mm. Yes. If you wait, yeah. And if you set it here, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Such a good point. And mm. I thought, wow, that's ego's turn your temperature up. 
Yes. If, if, I if, love if that's it. What you want, if that's what people want. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they may not want the extra money, but if they want that and they want a better caliber of client, then that's what they do. And they are worthy of that. Yeah. Definitely. Oh. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to get you to get, I'm going to get you to give us some, some tips. If you've got some tips for us, but give me just one second before you do that, because Melissa is going to be a part of the ultimate bridal business blueprint, my four day live event coming up in May. You can go to become a bride magnet.com become a bride magnet. It means that you are able to book a revolving door of brides so that when one finishes, you have another one in its place next year. That is the ultimate goal of being able to create a blueprint for the business. Um, and we're going to be going through the blueprint, but I've got seven guest speakers and Melissa is going to be one of them. Melissa, what are you going to be sharing? What is your oh topic? What yes. are you be sharing with us? So I have, I've got my list here because I know it all back to front, but I thought I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have all this here. So so basically, um, what we're going to be um, talking about on the day, and I'm so honoured to be doing it and to share this with your audience. So we're going to be talking about how to feel worthy in your business to attract abundance. Why, and this is really important, do some people attract pain clients easily and others always struggle? Um, mindset in relation to profits. There is a big correlation there. How a simple shift in mindset will change everything in your business. It really will. Um, owning your worth. I'm so excited to be talking about that. Owning your worth. What is manifesting? Why is it so powerful? But how are we going to use this in, in your audience business? Um, how to manifest abundance in your business. So abundance isn't just money. As you said, it's it's a caliber. It's good times. It's good people. It's good referrals as well. Yeah. Uh, create into existence your dream business. So what that means to you and create it, think it into existence. We're going to create that. Um, we create our own reality. What we give out comes back to us. Your thoughts create your, your outcomes. And uh, to finish off with understanding limiting beliefs and the shifts to take to move them, be aligned with your business and perfects, purpose, sorry, and your profits are going to come to you. Yes. I'm so excited to be talking about oh that. Oh my God, so am I. And one of the things that you and I share, and again, this is what the Become a Bride Magnet program, My, it's called the Ultimate Bridal Business Blueprint. It's a blueprint I take my clients through to become a bride magnet. And one of the things that you and I share is the fact of that manifesting maybe not manifesting but even just wanting that yeah. dream lifestyle that dream business that abundant lifestyle what that means to you we're not we're not here to yeah. say oh if you do this you're gonna earn six figures Fly around the world yeah. if you're not yeah, yeah if you're gonna do this exactly we, we, that's not what we're about what we you and I share I think in common is we want people to succeed however they wish to do so yeah, what, However, what does it look like for them? What yeah. does it look like for you? And I was sharing with Melissa even before we got on our call today, I was saying to her that for me, it wasn't about really the money when I started my business. It was what can I do that yep. I have passion in, that I absolutely love, where I can be at home with my daughter during the week because she was a baby at the time and I could work a part-time job and earn a full-time income that was my goal that was my abundant lifestyle yep. Yep. was to earn that full-time uh, wage only really working one sometimes two days a week depending on the season um and yeah so that was for me and and I want to make and, and I want to make sure that uh, my artists and stylists my hairstylists and makeup artists out there know that Melissa and I come from exactly the same point there where we want to help you create whatever balance that is for you yeah 100% 100% as you said and, and this goes back to the imposter syndrome not looking at someone else and thinking well to be successful I need to be like her or yes. him or whatever it is it's it's whatever it looks like to you because things are different you know it, it, it's it's a different journey for everyone and an abundant life in, encompasses money but it also encompasses love and happiness and joy and gratitude yeah. yes so I love that point and, and you know what we could talk about uh, we could do a whole other episode on imposter syndrome because imposter like yeah. all of us have experienced it you know I exactly. know I have you know a few times throughout my business life you know who am I to 
you yeah, know, but, but who am I to, you know, when it comes to putting yourself out there? So that's another, we'll, we'll leave that for another episode, but I'm, I'm excited yeah. to be, um, I'm excited to be going on your program. I think I'm going to learn loads myself, even <laughs> <laughs> about, about creating that abundance lifestyle. So Melissa, before we go, what are a couple of tips that you can give our listeners and, and viewers as yes. with regards to uh, either mindset or, or manifesting or, or what, 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 are your, what are your tips on a sort of business building side of things? For the business building side, I think always be honest with yourself, mm. okay? Being honest with yourself means really opening up and understanding and verbalizing what you want and what you see because a lot of the times we don't when we hear these things back to us about what what it's not I don't want to say what we should be doing because everyone's journey is different but we're basically coming up with a BS, BS excuse okay be honest with yourself and ask yourself where did that come from yeah so, you know, it's, 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 if you've got listeners or, or viewers, um, you know, saying, well, I just haven't got my foot in the door because of this, be honest with yourself. You're not going to like the honesty. Um, you and I can be honest to them and say, no, it's because of this, Yeah. but you've got to be honest with yourself and you have to be open to that. I, I also think on that as well, trust your instinct because if you've got a game plan and you know damn well that it's because of your worth, that it's going to work, it doesn't actually matter what someone else tells me to do. If I know my worth, but if you truly understand it, you get that feeling in here, not in your head, not in your heart, in your gut, top of yeah. your gut. When you get that feeling, that's probably one of my top tips. Like there's things in my business that I just pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And I was told you can't run it that way. You should be doing it. But I knew my value and worth. So I stuck to it and it worked. Now, if you, if you get that struggle in you, when someone says you should do it this way and you've got a struggle, it's either because you're not aligning with yourself and what they're telling you, what they're telling you or, or that piece of advice isn't aligning with you. That struggle is because you're not stepping into your authentic self. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't not listen to the advice, but what I'm saying is take that advice, see what it resonates and be honest. Yeah. Yourself. Don't just go with the flow because you believe that you need to. Where do you feel it? For me, it's in here. I feel yeah. it in my gut when I know it's right. And I will stick to that. doesn't matter. You can burn my environment down. I'm not wavering. I am not running. I'm not moving. Yeah. Um, that's probably my biggest tip for running your business mm. is to really trust yourself, but you're only going to trust yourself once you step into that alignment with your values and your authentic self. Yeah. Um, and understand that struggle in you is because you're not, if someone says, oh, we should do this way or we shouldn't do it this way. If you've got that internal struggle, that's because you know something about that isn't set. What can I take from that and make it my own? Yeah. 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 Yeah, make it my own. That's probably my my biggest tips when coming to running it. Running yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And I think exactly what you're saying is it's a bit like that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You know, you we can give you all of the tools that you can use. And, and the idea is, is that some, like you're saying, some tools that you'll want to use and they're going to resonate with you. You know, I've got scripts um, that I'm going to be giving yep. out to my to my clients that they can use on the phone, talking to their brides, booking them in. Now, does that mean they have to read every single word, word for word? Of course not. You have to take your, uh, yeah, yeah. you've got to take your point of view, how you would say it in your words um, and use it to your best advantage. I love that. I love that. And what resonates with you? Because yes. the way that I talk is different to the way someone else talks, the way you talk. And if you are aligning with your true self, like you're going to use your own language. Yeah. Yeah. I, I sound yeah. like an Aussie bogan, but I'm like, I'm not going to change that because it's who I am, you know? And I use a lot of hand gestures. I'm not going to change that when, when I'm, a, you know, selling a coaching program or something to people because, and people will align with you or they don't. But if you don't take it and make it your own, um, then it's not going to work. And on the flip side of that is if, your listeners and viewers have been trying something for, for a long time and it's not working, there's your answer. Change it. 
Yeah, definition of madness, doing the same thing yeah. over and over again, expecting a different result. And I had the exact same conversation. I think it was with Gretchen Maurer uh, yesterday oh, yeah. on our call. And she was saying the same thing. You know, sometimes you can do things over and over again and they just, nothing works. So change it, change the situation. Be open, 100%. Yeah. Be yeah. yeah. open to the script and say, okay, I, w- I probably wouldn't use, okay, say, say the word love, for example. Thanks, love, or thanks. But what would I use? Thank <laughs> you, that's ace. Yeah. You know, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, little things. Yeah. No, that's yeah. awesome. I, I love that. And I, I, you know, agree with Gretchen there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were both saying the same thing. It's really funny. Yeah. I I yeah. I think we all seem to be very aligned. I'm so excited. I've got such a group of amazing educators. So thank you so much. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for uh, recording the podcast with me. Um, I'm so excited to have you on the event next week. Likewise, I I know I will learn just as much of this as your as your audience will learn. I'm going to learn from this as well. So I'm extremely honoured that you've asked me, and I cannot wait to see you and uh, your audience. And so thank you so much for asking me and for asking me on this podcast uh, and recording as well. I'm really oh, thank great. you. Now, where can everyone find a little bit more about you? Sure, sure. So my business is called Abundant Life Studio. Um, and if you Google that, um, you can see my my social media. You, they can follow. Uh, me. Melissa's really hot on TikTok, everyone. <laughs> you need to get on TikTok and check out Melissa on TikTok. She's so oh, they, cool on there. Good filters there. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, TikTok, I'm really enjoying it. So Abundant Life Studio on there. And um, of course, um, I've, I am updating my website, so yeah. It's so, not that so great. otherwise, uh, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, of course. If, and, and abundant life, it's going to come probably Google my business. It'll come up. So abundant oh, life, awesome. uh, abundant life studio, anything like that. Melissa Mitchell. I'm sure I'll pop up somewhere. So perfect, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Melissa, and we will see you in just a couple of weeks. Oh my gosh, I can't wait! I can't right. wait. Thank you, Dawn, and thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank Bye. you, guys. Bye.